and the young home. What time is it? I must have fell asleep waiting. I thought you were only going to the drugstore. Where have you been? I decided to go to the cemetery. The cemetery? But you haven't been there since your father died. I know. And the strangest thing happened to me when I was there. I parked the car and I started wandering around looking for my father's tombstone. I saw a man and I was going to ask him where the serenity section was. Um, Kathy, you should have left immediately. You don't know what would have happened with nobody else around. Why did you come back and get me? I would have gone back with you. Listen to me. Please sit down. He didn't appear to be violent. In fact, he seemed quite pleasant. I wasn't afraid of him. When I got closer, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but it sounded like he was praying. He was saying things like, I only want to make you happy. And if you love me, I'll take good care of you. But he was so focused, he didn't see me, and, and I didn't want to interrupt him. So I found a map of the cemetery, and it showed me that I had been in the right section. Steve, the man was standing on my father's grave. Kathy, you listen to me. I don't care. You should have left. Well, I didn't. But I was flustered, to say the least. I sat down on one of those marble benches. Steve, I think this is the man my mother's going to see. I've wanted to hate him. I think she's behaved shamefully. A widow should honor the memory of her husband. A widow should be modest and do volunteer work. <laughs> Not date night at Denny's, for God's sake. Well, this man, mother said his name was Jim, was not the monster that I had imagined. And if he'd been a creep, he, I would have known what to do. Times have changed. A 70-year-old woman is not old. Dating may be a good thing. Should a widow throw herself in her husband's funeral entirely because of position? That's about what your father had done. That's why I went to the cemetery in the first place. I want him to tell me what to do. I didn't pray to God. I, I prayed to my father. I told him how upset I was and that I didn't know what to do about my mother. I, I was just so upset. I, I wanted him to tell me what to do. I wanted him to speak to me. If you tell me that a voice came from heaven, I'm taking you to the hospital. <laughs> No Steve, no voices, no bolts of lightning, nothing like that. Well? Well, I just noticed how peaceful I felt sitting there. And what a beautiful day it was to be alive. Yesterday, Mother told me that she was so miserable after Daddy died that she wanted to die too. And it occurred to me that if she had she would have missed this beautiful day. And then my father's face was so vivid in my memory. He was smiling at me with pride, <laughs> like when I used to bring the all A's on my report card. It was like he was saying that his soul could rest in peace if we're all living our lives in joy. And appreciating life. <laughs> I don't understand it all completely. But it's really not a terrible thing for another man to be in my mother's life. <laughs> if my mother's happy, my father's happy. <laughs> it's quite simple, don't you think? What I think is you deserve an A. Come here, Miss Dusty. You go to the heavy class.